breaking the cycle. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. Nahum 1, 7. Are you struggling today in your Christian walk? Do you feel like you are always trying to do the right thing and say the right thing, but somehow you're still failing? It may help you to know that the Apostle Paul struggled too. He writes in Romans seven fifteen through 20, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This is what I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does. Does that sound a little mind-boggling and a little too familiar? Paul describes the battle with our sinful nature as a cycle of sorts. We do what we don't want to do. We don't want to do what we do want to do. Then we go around and around and around again. But Jesus has freed us from the cycle of sin, as Paul says in Romans 8, 1 and 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus... The law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. When we accept Christ, not only as Savior, but also as Lord, the sin cycle no longer has power over us. Giving Jesus full control of our lives is the secret to escaping the endless downward spiral. The problem for too many of us, though, is that we're not willing to relinquish control of our lives to Christ. There is something in each of us that says we can run our own life better than God can. We think we know ourselves. We think we know what's best for us better than God does. We even rationalize this by saying, God has given me a mind to think with. Therefore, By my own logical deductions, I can determine what is best for me, even if that best is contrary to what God says in his word. Pride is at the crux of our dilemma. So is fear. We may concede that God knows a thing or two. We may even agree theoretically that he has a right to be in control. But then fear kicks in. We are afraid of what will happen if we give God full control of our lives. We're afraid he might send us to an African jungle as a missionary or make us sell everything we have and give it to the poor. We're afraid that if we really surrender our lives to him, he will ask us to do something really difficult or foolish or embarrassing or costly. The call of the Christian gospel is to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. As James 4.10 says, But that's not so he can embarrass you or harm you or have fun bossing you around. It's so he may exalt you in due time. Let me give you a heads up, though. When you have truly humbled yourself, you will not be aware that you have done it. Humility is never conscious of itself. When you reach that place of full relinquishment, you will not know it, but others will. You will be like a light shining in a dark world. People will recognize your good works and then they will give glory to God. Don't be too afraid to make Jesus your Lord or too proud to give him full control of your life. The call of God is the call of a loving father to his children. It is the call of a gentle shepherd to his sheep. The Lord wants you to cast all your cares on him. Why? Because as 1 Peter 5, 7 says, he cares for you. Make the decision today to humble yourself before God and put your life in his hands. 
After all, he only wants what is best for you, and he knows what is actually better for you than you do. He knows that the best he can give you is from him, and he knows how to achieve it. Besides, only by relinquishing control to him will you finally be able to escape the cycle of sin and failure that keeps pulling you down. God loves you. He is faithful. You can trust him.